the advantages that the Satellite Earth Observation offers in the development context are quite varied. What you have is a large set of data that is continuous, that covers a large spatial area, and that really is neutral and that then can be used and customized accordingly. So depending on which country and which context we're talking about, it could be used for monitoring, it could be used to fill data gaps when ground observation systems are lacking, or it could simply be used to generate new products that can help to respond to a very specific development solution. Monitoring in the traditional way has become more and more costly. For us to do the analytics, for us to really understand what the impact is of the operations, needs to get to a different level. And with the spatial technology, you can do that. Everybody has been scrambling to move along the trajectory from input monitoring, how much money are we spending, what kind of infrastructure do we build, how many schools do we build, into impact and outcome monitoring. And that is a lot harder to do, right? And this technology can help us a lot in that space. Our data show really things that you cannot see from the ground. You have a unique vantage point that you can compare information on one part of the globe with another part of the globe. Altogether, there's a very strong capacity. Not only the satellites, the whole data processing, the services that are connected to it, our science missions, the meteorological missions. So what we really want to do is make sure that this capacity from space can be used on the ground for the people that need it. Satellite Earth observation gave us a whole new perspective. We've been deploying this technology in all of our regions to see what the natural resources look like in terms of environment protection, disaster risk management, and climate change mitigation and adaptation. The top-down view and then the ground-level view gave us a perfect opportunity to have a complete understanding of the project site so that we can properly design projects to minimize the risks for the local communities with Earth observation, you can get high resolution imagery and terrain data on a daily basis over multiple months and years. It just gives you tremendous opportunity to get insights that you just can't get by doing surveys because you need that continuity. It's just much better to plan infrastructure with that much more massive data set. And thanks to ESA for making this free and open, it's really kind of fueling a whole ecosystem around that. Some of the really fundamental benefits that we get is the ability to have in-depth, precise, timely information on what's happening at a massive scale in the countries and regions that we work in, and over time, which gives us this great ability to compare what's happening, understand trends, and work with our clients to make better decisions predicting what might come in the future. One of the really interesting things that Earth Observation allows us to do is to actually see where conflict is taking place. You can literally see from space the destruction. You can see the damaged buildings. You can see the destroyed power plant. You can see this almost in real time. What is most valuable from the satellite data is now the precision, the level of detail that you can obtain, the ability to look at time series so that you can see change, but also the wide range of parameters that are now being measured. So we have a wealth of data that we could not imagine 5, 10, 15 years ago. More importantly, it is translating that data into ways in which communities and policymakers can understand and use it. There's a lot of benefits in terms of monitoring of public investments, specifically, for instance, in fragile and conflict states where we are unable to have a presence on the ground. So being able to have a system of Earth observation that allows us to monitor where the investments are happening in many ways in real time and therefore be able to ascertain that investments and transfers of funds for the government has resulted in the appropriate investments where security doesn't allow us to do the appropriate due diligence on the ground becomes a tremendous amount of help for accountability. We have a perfect synergy. We can deliver technology and the data that are necessary to derive information for development purposes. We have invested together quite some effort and energy to build up uh, projects over the last decade. We had a lot of demonstrated projects, but I think now it is time to scale up and see the cooperation in a more institutional and larger framework. And that's exactly what we're doing now with Space for IDA. On the ESA side, we have set up a program which is funded by our member states for the use of space in development activities. There's so much work to do and so many complex issues we have to address. So it's impossible to work alone. Our strategy 2030 recognizes this 
and encourages us to work with others, whether they co-finance with the money or collaborate with their knowledge or new technology. The European Space Agency is critical for our success of our projects on the ground. It's one thing to have fantastic technology is another thing to actually be able to use it on a day-to-day -day basis. And where we can use it is practically everywhere. It cuts across all the sectors, and it's particularly important as we are trying to implement the Sustainable Development Goals in their entirety, because all the pieces are connected. And if you have spatial information on one subset of the objectives, for instance, it can help with monitoring the others as well. The complexity of development is increasing every day for all the reasons that we all know very well, including the climate challenge, the migration challenges, all these things. Putting all these data together in one space is extraordinarily important. Also for donors to say, we will get value for money. If we have data and images and information around the spatial distribution of, say, flooded areas, for instance, and we overlay this with a poverty map, and we overlay this with the capacity on the ground to implement things, we can put all the pieces together across the project cycle. We build that into our policy advice and we can prioritize where investments are made, but also monitor if the investments that are made are giving good results. Having the ability to use the virtual images in a conversation with your counterpart, say a Minister of Finance, is just beyond powerful. When you can say, look, here this is what it looks like and here is how it's integrated. I think all of us have been always fascinated by the potential that this technology gives us in the development space. Now it's gone beyond the fascination. I think now we are entering a stage where we can actually turn the beautiful images that we all like into real management decision material.